Rules Committee met to consider the rule to provide for consideration of gun control legislation on the House floor. The two measures to be considered are the so-called Brady Bill, requiring a seven-day background security check for handgun purchases, and the Staggers Bill, offered by Democratic Representative Harley Staggers of West Virginia. The Staggers measure would be offered as an alternative amendment in the nature of a substitute. It provides for an instant background check for all persons who wish to purchase a handgun. The check would be through a toll-free number provided by the Justice Department that firearms dealers would be required to call before selling a handgun. Next, we'll bring you the Rules Committee hearing. will now come to order. The matter before the committee today is H.R. 7 from the Judiciary Committee, the Brand Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act. Very happy and honored to have the chairman of that committee, the Honorable Jack Brooks of Texas, to be the lead-off witness. Colonel Brooks, formerly of the Marine Corps. <laughs> All right, I got my Motley lighter. <laughs> I'm going to change the back to say, we care. You see that? You have one of them? Go. <coughs> well, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee, I'm here to request you to grant a rule for the full consideration of the bill H.R. 7, the seven-day waiting period bill. The committee on the judiciary, after a full and energetic debate, on the bill, ordered it reported by a vote of 23 to 11 on April 23rd. The bill, boiled down to its essence, provides for a waiting period of up to seven days before an individual may purchase a handgun from a registered gun dealer. During the seven-day period, the local law enforcement authorities will be notified by the gun dealer of the prospective purchase and will have the optional opportunity to do a background check to find out whether the purchaser would be prohibited from buying a weapon under federal law. The committee also considered an amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Staggers of West Virginia, which provides for an instantaneous background <coughs> check at the point of sale. The committee rejected the amendment by a vote of 11 to 23. I believe that a rule for this measure should permit the comprehensive discussion of the relative merits of both approaches, the seven-day waiting period and the staggers instantaneous check. Due to considerable controversy over this matter, I think it would be appropriate to permit one hour of general debate on H.R. 7 as reported by the Judiciary Committee. I also believe that the staggers amendment, which has a great deal of support in the House, should be made in order as an alternative an amendment in the nature of a substitute, and that it should be given at least one hour of debate time. Other than those two specific recommendations, I leave it to the wisdom of the Rules Committee to formulate an equitable rule which will permit this controversial matter to be fully aired and which will permit the House <coughs> to work its will. I appreciate the opportunity to testify here today. would be happy to answer any questions that I might. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, did uh, I didn't get the vote on staggers before your committee. What was the vote on staggers? The same, 23 to 11. The, the other vote, way? Yeah. Okay. Votes didn't change a whole lot. In the <laughs> uh, uh, I commend the, the chairman. I, I know this has been a very difficult uh, chore for you, and it's, uh, it, it's fraught with all types of emotion. And, and, and we on the Rules Committee are trying to figure out a fair rule that would not advantage either side, but would people would know when the vote was over that that it was a, a fair vote and it was done because of the the, the rule and, and that they weren't put into any awkward position because of the rule and that's one of the things we're trying to do and uh, many people would like a vote on the Brady Bill, but under the usual procedure, if uh, the Brady Bill is base text, and Staggers is a substitute too, and Staggers uh, prevails, uh, you never get a vote on Brady. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, of course, that I agree with you that we should 
uh, go by the regular order. You should take up the bill, and you take up the amendments, and uh, if it was a bill that had 30 amendments, you'd have 30 amendments, and whatever the bill as amended comes up for a vote. But prior to that, uh, the Republicans have preserved for them and reserved for them an option to recommit the bill under any uh, instructions or manner that they might want to. And I don't presume to say what they'll do, what they, but I know what I, they I can understand. do. I understand that and the And they have chairman, every right to do that. Your uh, chairman is absolutely right. It's a minority motion, and uh, it, it, it uh, probably Not will, mine. I know. It will reflect the, the minority's viewpoint. Uh, I, I would wish that the committee could get some kind of uh, sense from somebody that this um, motion to recommit with instructions would contain the Brady language if the Stagus Amendment is successful. Well, that's... I, I, I just, personally am not for the Brady Bill. I understand that, Mr. Chairman. If you give me that opportunity, I would be delighted to have it. I, I understand that. But, um, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm just uh, picking I, just, the chairman's you brain. You can't make them do it. It's their choice. I understand that. But I, I'm just talking about the, the, I, I, people uh, feel that because this issue has been here and uh, that they would like to see a a vote on Brady up or down? Mr. Chairman, they have two votes regardless. You take up a bill, you take up an amendment in the nature of a substitute, you adopt the amendment in the nature of a substitute, then the bill comes back as amended by the substitute, and they have a second shot at it if they want to vote on it again. I don't know what else they can ask for unless they want a motion to recommit. And I, you give them that option, if they take it or not, I cannot. We can't. Uh, as a Democrat, I just don't have any authority over what they... No, I'm, I'm not asking you. I'm ju we're just talking, and I just thought maybe you might have some ideas. I, I know you can't do it. I think it's their option. They get two votes, as it is. If they want another vote, they can have one on a motion to recommit. Now, I don't know how many options you need to give them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Derrick. What? You could still very easily, and I understand what you're saying, Jack, you could go through the whole procedure and never get a direct vote on Brady. Well, in effect, if you're going to get a vote on Brady, if they vote for Staggers, that means they're, they're not too keen on Brady as it is. And then when you vote on the bill as amended or substituted, you have another shot at it. Now, if they're for Brady, I wouldn't vote for the Staggers Amendment, and I would vote against it if it passed. Well, I mean, that's the choice they got. Two there, big, fat votes. They can take there, them. Are, there are several of the brothers who are kind of for Brady and Staggers, and uh, that well, is what uh, gives us a little problem. Well, yes, that does <laughs> present a problem. And that is the problem that we're trying to avoid. I understand. <laughs> Uh, what <laughs> that is bad. That's bad, Butler. I mean, Mr. Derrick. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, let me just say to the uh, gentleman from Texas that uh, uh, I quite naturally share his uh, view of the Brady Bill and the Staggers Bill. Uh, I sometimes get a little emotional about this because I. Uh, my wife lives at home during the week up in upstate New York in the rural area where we don't even have a police department in the town where we live in. My house was broken into the other day and uh, bottles of urine were strewn all over the damn place. Uh, and when I think of people trying to take away the guns of law-abiding citizens and I look at all these bills in the Senate and the House that would uh, do just that, a foot in the door, I really get a little exercise. But let's just talk calmly. and. Uh, uh, say that what I intend to do, in, unless there is a regular order rule presented to this House so that the House can work its will and let the chips fall where they may, I'm going to do everything in my power to defeat this rule. And those of you out there that support Brady or Staggers, either one, you better keep that in mind because we can't have an advantage for either side. Now, I feel very strongly for Staggers, but uh, if we do as you say, if we give a one-hour general debate on the rule, and if we give then Mr. Staggers uh, his uh, day in court, uh, there is going to be a clear-cut vote. And for those that say we got members that want to vote both sides, 
You know, it comes time when you have to stand up in this house and be a man. Or, in today's context, sometimes you have to stand up and be a woman. But you have to stand up. Thank you, Ms. Slaughter. You're welcome. <laughs> and I just believe that uh, if the House does work its will, we've lived under this procedure of a regular rule of order where that if a, a bill is amended in committee, uh, such as the Brady bill was by a vote of 23 to 11, that's the base bill. It comes out on this floor. Then other members have the opportunity to offer their amendment. In this case, it staggers. That is a clear-cut vote, and you either vote for Brady or you vote against it. And there shouldn't be any question about this. That's where you handle bills. most bills, isn't it? Well, it's the way, uh, the fair way, and Mr. Moakley's been pretty good to us of late. And uh, well, he's kind. I just hope that it continues. And, and uh, it's a reasonable uh, assumption that if you are for A and you vote for B, then you ain't too strong for A. <laughs> that's right. Well, enough said, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your position, and I appreciate you asking for a fair rule that will let the chips fall where they may. I hope that's what we put out. Thank you. Gentleman from California, Mr. Billinson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's not, not much to say, really, that the Brady Bill, which I support, has a certain advantage. Of course, it, it is the base bill. It was the one which was voted out by the committee. Um, you're in the strange pos position where if the Staggers Bill had been voted out as the, as the base bill, then the Brady, the Brady Bill would have a separate vote on it as a substitute, I assume. No, but, no, but um, If they offered it as an amendment or... Sure. Um, but it is the base bill. It's the bill that your committee, over the I guess, over the chairman's objections, did did vote out. So I uh, I kind of share the the chairman's feelings. Not sure what they are, but I share them. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think the regular. Oh, I'm telling you, this committee is something today. <laughs> I think we know what we're doing, Mr. Chairman, and I, th I think the regular order probably is the proper way to handle it, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Quillen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman Brooks, I tell you, I, I applaud you. I think you're on, on target. I'm against the Brady Bill. I'm for the Stagger Substitute. And I'll tell you why. In Tennessee, we have a 15-day waiting period before you can buy any handgun. And just over the weekend, we had the murders of young men shot in the head with a handgun, killed them, cold blood, and it doesn't work. And a seven-day waiting period won't work, and I think it's a, it's a crying shame that we would let our emotions appeal to the public beyond reason and try to put in a law that we know that won't work, and I'm against it. Uh, Mr. Quillen, you know, of course, that even uh, under that seven-day waiting period, you sent it to the police chief, and he has an option. He might not reply. He might not say anything in seven days. If he's busy that seven days, he may never reply, and they automatically go right on and just sell the gun. Well, that's what they do in Tennessee. With a 15-day waiting period, people get guns. They murder. They do everything. It isn't a gun. It's a man who pulls the trigger. So I applaud you. Thank you. Gentleman with Yield. Aren't you going to smile? <laughs> yes, sir. I'd smile. <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman with Yield, I'd like to uh, ask unanimous consent that the administration's position on this issue be submitted to the record. Without objection, the gentleman from New York will submit the administration's position on this. Uh, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Frost. I'm pleased to uh, see the dean of my delegation here. Um, Chairman Brooks, um, you know that this is, uh, you've seen all the stories in the paper. You know how uh, contentious this issue is before the committee today. Um, I've been on the committee for 13 years now. And every once in a while, uh, the committee has to make its own decision. Uh, and I would like to say to you and to others who are here that as far as I can tell, no one is uh, trying to impose any decision on this committee. Uh, that uh, the 13 of us on this committee intend to resolve this issue ourselves and to take full responsibility for the rule that we draft. Um, I hope it will be a fair rule. I hope it will be one uh, along the lines that you have suggested. Um, my personal feeling is that we should follow the regular order. And if that's what this committee does, 
uh, then uh, we will be the ones who will have made that decision. Uh, again, no one is making that decision for us in this matter. Um, you and I reach a somewhat different result on the merits on the bill. Uh, I've thought about it quite a bit. Um, I intend to support the Brady Bill, but I also intend to support the regular order. And I think that is the fairest way for this matter to be considered by this committee and by the House. Thank you, Mr. Frost. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I welcome you, Chairman Brooks. You were my first chairman when I came to this Congress, and uh, it's nice to see you Come here. Come a long way, have you? Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's debatable, Mr. Chairman. I've served four months on this committee, and I'm enjoying it, but uh, this is the second time television cameras have been here, and I thought I was getting away from them when I left the banking committee. Uh, let, me, uh, let me say that uh, on, get I think it's a very simple <laughs> <laughs> Please keep it on Chairman Brooks. There's a, there's a very simple process here which I think should be followed. The committee, as uh, Mr. Solomon said, has uh, reported out the bill and we should have uh, an amendment to substitute it. And that's the Staggers Amendment. I happen to be supporting that. Uh, like Mr. Quillen, my state has a 15-day waiting period in California. Since it went into effect, we've had a 126 percent increase in the homicide rate. And I think that it's very tragic to believe, as some do, that this is a panacea. In fact, I think that in many cases it could exacerbate the problem when law-abiding citizens are attempting to get the weapons that they need to protect themselves. And I hope very much that we're able to move forward. And I congratulate you and your committee for your fine work. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dreyer. Uh, gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Barnier, please. Uh, Mr. McCure. No question, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Chairman, very briefly, thank you for the opportunity. And, and Mr. Chairman, um, our chairman has indicated that he wants a, a fair procedure that will not advantage either of the two major contending positions. And uh, we've been struggling with how best to do that. And I'm interested in, in the vote that you had in your committee that, I, as I understand, you said it was 23 to 11, both to pass the Brady Bill and, tw and 11 to 23 on the Staggers Amendment with no change in votes. So apparently, at least in your committee, the vote on the Staggers bill was perceived to be exactly the same vote as the vote on the Brady bill itself. So what you're suggesting is a fair procedure in order that, the, the, that there actually be a clear-cut vote on the Brady bill on the floor uh, would be the same as actually having the, the vote on the Staggers substitute. That would be a, that would be a clear-cut vote in your view. In my view. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Gordon. Just briefly, I want to concur with the uh, comments uh, made by my colleague from Texas, Mr. Frost. I think he summed up my feeling very well earlier. Gentleman lady from New York, Mr. Slaughter. Jack Brooks is my favorite one. I, I love him, but I don't agree with you on this one, Sweet Brooks. Um, it seems to me that Americans can wait a week for their dry cleaning and two weeks to get their shoes resold, and they ought to be able to wait seven days to get a gun. And I, a I, I, I'm so. For a little more money. What's that? <laughs> you get one day service for a little more money, you know. Well, I, I'm, I'm always willing to wait a little bit, I guess, and save a few dollars. Um, but it seems to me that if we wait a few days, we might save a lot of lives. And I, I don't even hear any argument that. If that thing doesn't work and more and more people are getting killed, I mean, I'm still troubled by that factor. Um, but I'm going to stick with the police agencies in the country and try to help them make their job a little bit easier as well. So I'm going to vote for the Brady Bill. I surely would love to have a chance to have an opportunity to vote for it. I'm going to stand up like a woman, Mr. Solomon, and do my part. I admire you. Mr. Chairman, as usual, thank you very much for an thank excellent you, Mr. testimony. Thank you, It's a pleasure to be with you. The Honorable James Sensenbrenner. What do I do with Mr. Brooks and Bruce <laughs> I, I, If I were you, I'd call the EPA. <laughs> That's a good idea. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have a prepared statement that has been distributed that I would like to ask unanimous consent to be inserted into the record. Without objection, the gentleman from Wisconsin statement will appear on the record. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I come before you today as a supporter of the Brady Bill and an opponent of the Staggers Amendment. Uh, I believe that the Brady Bill represents a practical and fiscally feasible approach to the problem of guns. 
I do not believe it to be a panacea, but I do believe, as former President Reagan said when he endorsed the Brady Bill, that if this bill can reduce the number of handgun uh, deaths by 10 to 15 percent, it is worthwhile making it the law of the land. Uh, I would also draw the attention of the members of the committee that the Staggers Bill is unfunded. There is no authorization uh, to the Justice Department of any funds to do the job that the Staggers Bill requires them to be done within six months. And if you believe the estimates on how much uh, it would cost to input all of the federal, state, and local criminal justice records, uh, we will be close to a billion dollars in total costs. With the budget agreement uh, uh, being enforced, that would require a billion dollar sequestration out of other programs should the Staggers Bill uh, become law. And that's something that I don't want to justify to my constituents. And I think those who support Staggers ought to think twice uh, for an argument uh, to justify to their own constituents. This committee has got one of the more difficult tasks in uh, framing a fair rule. Uh, if I had my druthers, I would support a king of the hill uh, type rule uh, with the Brady bill last. And that way there would be both up or down votes on Staggers and Brady so that every one of us would have to stand up and be counted on both of these proposals. Uh, however, I would be very willing to defer to the judgment of the rule co Rules Committee on this particular well, gentleman issue. Yield. I that, ha happily. That would, that would be a, a great rule, but you'd have to pass the rule before we got to the floor. I'm not sure we'd That's have right. votes for that. You wouldn't be able to pass That's the right. rule. Yeah. I would, however, caution the committee uh, relative to attempting to have the up or down vote on the motion to recommit. Uh, as you know, the presidents of the House of Representatives have the motion to recommit lie on the minority side in the order of seniority. Uh, of the members of the minority on the committee that is handling the bill. Uh, in this morning's Washington Post, Mr. Fish announced that he would not make a motion to recommit. Uh, the next in seniority on the Republican side is Mr. Moorhead of California, who is a very strong opponent of the Brady bill. And obviously, if he took the motion to recommit, he would not make a motion to recommit with the instructions containing the Brady Bill that would give the House the up or down vote on the Brady Bill. Uh, and I'm certain that uh, he would take it simply to thwart uh, uh, a motion to recommit with the instructions of the Brady Bill uh, contained in it. Uh, Mr. Hyde ranks third and I ranked fourth. Uh, both of us are supporters of the Brady Bill. Uh, but the rules of the Republican conference require us at least to consult with the minority leadership uh, before making a motion that is opposed by a majority of Republicans. We and I'm sure that this would be that way. Now, I'd be happy to comply with the rule to consult. I'm not sure I would accept Mr. Michael's advice, but uh, uh, I, I don't think that I would even be given that opportunity uh, if the seniority precedent uh, were to prevail. And I definitely do not favor a rule that would override the seniority precedent. So we've had a hot potato in the Judiciary Committee. Uh, the hot potato is now in this room. I wish you all good luck, and I'll be happy to answer questions. I, I think uh, I, I thank the gentleman for his explanation for those in the audience that probably uh, weren't aware. But uh, we understand that that's the minority motion. We understand also that. Uh, uh, although you may f feel very strong for the Brady Bill, that you have to consult with the, the uh, minority. And when you went through the uh, seniority, uh, I'm sure that we'd never get a, a Brady Bill as the motion to recommit with instructions. That is correct. Uh, uh, but I, 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 I uh, thank the gentleman for his testimony. Well, his uh, let, let me also state that this is probably the only opportunity any of us in this room uh, will experience where the chairman of the full committee is opposed to the legislation that is being brought to the floor and the ranking Republican member of both the full committee and the subcommittee is in favor of it. Uh -huh. I can't remember that ever happening since I've been here and some have been here longer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Derrick. <clears throat> Mr. Senator Brenner, we appreciate your explanation and uh, analysis of our problem. Um, uh, my next question to you is, you know, what we really, uh, on the Rules Committee, whatever we come out with, we want to be fair. And, and, whoever, and, and the side that loses, we don't want them to be able to say, well, we would have won but for the rule. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and uh, do you have any, now that you've analyzed our problem, do you have some sort of uh, 
answer to it other than the... Uh, no, no, I don't. Let me say that there are a number of our colleagues that will vote yes on Staggers and yes on Brady. And there are also another group of our colleagues that will vote no on both. Uh, uh, I don't plan on doing that. Uh, it's the yeses that we're concerned with, uh, mm -hmm. primarily. And uh, that, you know, I think, quite frankly, that we, we may have to, to go to regular order and the regular, but, you know, I think it will be a travesty if, 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 we, if the House doesn't get an up or down vote on the Brady Bill in, in, in some form. And, and that is the problem, uh, of course, that, that, that we're faced with. Well, I, I've, al I've also heard that there are some members that will vote yes on staggers for the purpose of substituting and then vote no if it is substituted as well. well uh, I don't have that many consistency pockets. Is not that, that. Consistency is not necessarily a prerequisite of election to this body. But, Correct. Um, in any event, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Sensenbrenner. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Sensenbrenner, old classmate. Um, you said that Ronald Reagan is with you, and I recall uh, the old ivory soap commercial back in the Second World War, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, Ronald Reagan is uh, 99 and 44, 100 percent pure mm -hmm. and right, uh, but this time he's wrong. Uh, let me just say, you, you seem to be assuming that Staggers is going to pass when you brought up the fact that it would go down the seniority system. Uh, and with, if, uh, if Staggers passes, and Mr. Moorhead has voted for Staggers, then uh, he cannot uh, be eligible to offer the motion to recommit uh. because he is not opposed to the bill. He is in favor of Staggers. Uh. That would throw it back into your lap as uh, having the motion to recommit if with the If the gentleman will yield, uh, Mr. Moorhead could very well adopt the position of being no on both or the position of voting yes to substitute Staggers to get rid of Brady and then being against staggers when it comes up for final passage. Yeah. You know, all you have to say, Mr. <coughs> Solomon, is I'm opposed to the bill in its present form, Mr. Speaker, and the Speaker has to recognize mm -hmm. you. Well, I've known Carlos Moorhead for 13 years, as you have. Um, he seems to be a man of principle, mm -hmm. and if the bill in its present form is what he voted for uh, five minutes before, uh, I can assure you he's not going to change his vote in the middle of the street. So I don't think we really have to worry about that, but uh, I do appreciate your uh, offering to be fair of it, and I hope that this committee will uh, put out a rule which is a regular order, uh, which we've operated under for yeah. 100 years, and let yeah. the chips fall where they may. Mr. Salomon, I'll be back to you if I'm right and you're wrong on that. I'm sure you will, Jim. I know you. <laughs> Yield. Gentlemen from California, Mr. Billinson. Mr. Quillen. Thank you. I think it's the duty of this committee to put out a fair rule because a misconception of one way or the other would be a bad reflection. And I'm sure this committee will put out a fair rule. And I know I've worked with the chairman, Mr. Moakley, for many, many years. I've always found him to be fair, and I, I plead with him today for a fair rule, and I I believe that that's what this committee will do. At least I hope so. Thank you. Mr. Frost, gentleman from Texas. No questions. Mr. Dreyer. Mr. Barney, the gentleman from Michigan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jim, uh, well, I just want to make a couple of observations. Uh, number one, I, I think those people who uh, risk voting yes and yes on this, uh, you know, could create a really nasty situation for themselves politically. I mean, I don't, I, I suspect some people have thought that through, others may have not, but I, I would suggest that they be very cautious before, before, they, before they do that. Uh, uh, I think you're either for or against on this one, and I think uh, a double yes is a, is a political problem down the road that people might want to think about. The other concern I have is a, uh, on the motion to recommit. Let me ask you personally. I am somewhat. Do you know why Mr. Fish isn't here? No, I do not. I'm somewhat troubled that he is not here this 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 morning. Perhaps he has other business to, uh, that he's attending, and because I really would have liked to have discussed this with him. Uh, if if you had the motion to recommit, 
let's 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 assume, for instance, and I don't think this is going to happen. I hope it doesn't happen. Let's assume that Staggers is adopted as a substitute to the base bill, and then there, and we go right to recommittal. And let's assume you had the motion to recommit personally. Uh, would you offer the uh, Brady Bill in a motion to recommit? That would be my desire, but the rules of my conference do require me to consult with Mr. Michael beforehand. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And w w what do you think Mr. Michael might tell you? I would not put any words in his mouth. He's mm -hmm. very able to give his opinions by himself. Mm -hmm. Where is he on this issue? Uh, I believe he is opposed to Brady and in favor of Staggers. He's in favor of staggers. I see. So there's really no assurances that you would, what you're telling us that. Uh, uh, I can't make uh, that assurance. You know, let me say I would give it my best shot, uh, uh, but the rules of the conference do require a consultation. A consultation. Uh -huh. But it'd be your inclination personally if you had your options to do so. I'm a very strong supporter of the Brady Bill and have been a supporter of waiting periods since before I was elected to Congress. Mm -hmm. Do you understand Mr. Mr. Fisher's statement to be categorical, that he will not, in fact, offer it? I saw the statement in the, in the, in the press this morning That as well. is all I saw was uh, the statement in the press. Mm -hmm. Have you had a discussion with him about this? Uh, not since the story appeared. <coughs> and what was his feeling prior to the story? He wasn't that eager to make the motion to recommit with instructions. I see. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Dreyer? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, Mr. And Jim, is it your judgment as a supporter of the Brady Bill that this will reduce crime? I don't think anybody can make any assurance that either Brady or Staggers will reduce crime. Uh, in states that do have waiting periods or permit to purchase systems, there have been a number of those who are statutorily ineligible to possess firearms who have been stopped from uh, buying guns from licensed gun dealers. Uh, in Illinois, it was 9,000, almost 9,000 in 1989. Uh, in California, it was almost 3,000 in the same year. And in New Jersey and Maryland, it was a little bit less than 1,000. And uh, what these people would have done uh, with the firearms uh, had they obtained them, uh, nobody really knows. We're not dealing with any hard statistics with any of these kinds of proposals. I don't think uh, the people who support the Staggers bill can say the Staggers bill uh, will reduce crime either. Until we are able to get an instant computerized check, uh, Staggers and Brady will be using the same database. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Jim, you understand our interest in trying to, to develop a fair rule, and you also know the alternative before us, yeah. uh, the imperfect alternative before us. Uh, if we go with regular order on this matter, mm -hmm. uh, would you feel that you've been treated fairly, and do you feel, and would you feel that your uh, position has been treated fairly? Well, I certainly would accept uh, the decision of the Rules Committee, and I would support the rule because I think defeating the rule and not bringing this issue up would be a tragedy that would if, impact adversely on the House, uh, that we couldn't even decide the proper rules uh, in order to debate and vote on this very emotional issue. So I'd like to see the bill brought up tomorrow. I would like to see a decision made one way or the other. Uh, you know, and unless you folks come up with uh, uh, something that hasn't been discussed uh, during this hearing, it would be my intention to support whatever rule you came up with. But assuming that we go with regular order, mm -hmm. knowing the alternatives, would you, would you consider that you were treated fairly and that your well, position was treated fairly? Yeah. It would not be a perfect rule in, in my opinion, and uh, I think the argument would have to be clearly made that a vote for staggers is a vote against Brady. And there's no way around that. And that gets back to what Mr. Bonnier had to say, is to try to vote yes and yes or no and no uh, is a very difficult uh, political position to put one in. But do you feel that you would have been treated fairly and your position would have been treated fairly with regular order? Well, I don't vote for rules that I don't think treat my position fairly. And I will vote for this rule. OK. Uh, Mr. Sensenbrenner, you said this, that would not be a perfect rule. 
<laughs> what, in your estimation, would be a perfect rule? If I had my druthers, it would be king of the hill with Brady coming last. But you know that the rule couldn't pass. Now that's, that's, I said if I had my druthers. Oh, okay. Do you have any idea of a perfect rule that would pass? <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't counted noses on, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, would you yield? I yield gentlemen from New York. My good friend Jim, you shocked me. You know, time after time, um, when, when Mr. Mokley and I and the rest of the committee have uh, come to an agreement uh, on a modified closed rule, when I felt that no Republican was being gagged, and I've gone to the floor and, and have asked my Republican colleagues to support this modified closed rule, mm -hmm. you have come on that floor and adamantly voted no because it wasn't an open rule. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying it's not quite uh, uh, perfect. Well, I have uh, voted for some modified <laughs> closed rules, and I'll be the first to admit that uh, Gentlemen, I'm not the most consistent person around here either. But, uh, oh, yes, you, you're pretty consistent. Well, uh, you know, I have to come to my defense of the gentleman from Wisconsin. Uh, the gentleman who just questioned your consistency <laughs> last week uh, voted for a rule that waived the budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is often up here criticizing this committee for waiving the budget. So uh, to suggest that consistency is something that we all have to have here is a little, little Mr. beyond the pale. I think. Mr. Chairman, you have to yield since my uh, my name was mentioned indirectly. Uh, I yield to the gentleman whose name was mentioned uh, I, indirectly. I would, just say to my, <laughs> I would just say to my good friend from Michigan that uh, he knows very well we were promised in this committee that uh, the waiver for that rule was going to be corrected by amendment on the floor, which is why I voted for it. And uh, the committee chairman promised me that he would do it, and he did it. He lived up to his word. I guess we can all take an oath here that we're not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think I've got the perfect rule. Oh. Regular order with a motion to recommit offered by Mr. Sensenbrenner. Well, why don't we just write it that's, that way? It's highly irregular, not of order. <laughs> but it surely would do it, wouldn't it, folks? It, it, would, it would be great until we got to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Mr. Yeah, Mr. Boyd. Yeah, 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 I, I, I'd like to go back to my question because I'm somewhat troubled by the, uh, uh, the partisan uh, Taint, well, taint is probably too strong of a word. The, 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 the partisan hue of uh, the decision-making process within the Republican conference on this. Uh, I hope you're not telling us that this issue has become a partisan issue within your conference with respect to the Brady Bill and whether or not uh, it, in fact, could receive a motion of recommittal instructions because I want you to know that on our side of the aisle on this issue which we consider critically important to the the whole concept of crime in this country and uh, and the issues that are involved around handguns we d we have not taken a partisan position on it we are free to choose how we wish to vote on this issue based on our feelings our desires our conscience and I hope that you're not telling us that the Republican Party, vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Michael and Mr. Fish, are going to gag those people who have the opportunity to demonstrate, if possible, at the end of the process, God forbid if Staggers carries on a substitute, that they won't exercise that right because the position of the Republican Party is not to support this issue. Uh, Mr. Bonnier, there is no party position on the Republican side uh, uh, on this issue. Uh, the Republicans on the Judiciary Committee split seven to six on the issue uh, against it. It can't be closer than that. Uh, I would say that uh, over a third of the House Republican membership as a whole uh, supports the Brady Bill. Uh, there has been no pressure either from the leadership or from the administration uh, to oppose the Brady Bill, even though the administration has taken a position in opposition uh, to it. Uh, I am just quoting to you uh, the rule of the House Republican Conference that requires consultation. Uh, I have never been in a position to uh, have to comply with the rule. I may be shortly. Mm. Well, it sounds to me as if consultation has already been had and instructions have already been given to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Fish, and that perhaps explains the reason why uh, he made the statement he did today in the paper and the reason maybe, and I don't want to say this firmly, that he's not here this, this morning. But it would seem to me that if there is instructions by the Republican Party on this issue with respect to this very vital question of procedure, 
they will have to bear the responsibility if there is part of the problem at the end of the process. I yield to my friend from uh, oh, I, South Carolina. Am I mistaken? Did I not read in the uh, post this morning that the conference had taken a position on this? Uh, no, we have not. I do not no, believe that the conference has. Well, the, we had a discussion of it, but we did not take a position. Would the gentleman yield, or Mr. Murphy? Sure. Yeah. Let me just say that, uh, again, to my good friend from Michigan, that, that uh, I am a part of the Republican leadership. Uh, we have not even spoken to Mr. Fish about this. We have not done so deliberately, nor have we taken a position or a vote in our Republican conference. We had the administration come before us to talk to us about it. We didn't want to embarrass our own membership, and we wanted to let the chips fall where they may. And as far as the uh, consulting with uh, Mr. Fish or any other member of the committee uh, consulting with our leadership, this has been a long-standing conference rule. Uh, and it is no different than uh, you uh, people do with your own leadership, and I think you have the same rule. And uh, so it, we didn't adopt this rule in conference to deal with this subject. It's a long-standing rule. And we have taken no position, nor will we take a position. Well, I guess I'm puzzled, Mr. Chairman, because it would seem to be that Mr. Fish, who has traditionally been a supporter of the Brady Bill, having the opportunity to, to raise it at the end of the process, if the process plays out in the scenario that I have just described, uh, would, would want to exercise that right. And if he doesn't exercise that right, I think the question has to be raised, why isn't he doing so? And I suspect the reason he isn't doing so is he's getting instructions from, from those people in, in, in his party who don't want him to raise it. Well, and if, it's, if that's not true, I'd like to know the reason, and Mr. I wish Chairman, he was here to, to, to explain as, it to as me. As the ranking member of the subcommittee, I have received no instructions from anybody on this issue. Uh, my concern uh, is that the, the traditional order of offering the motion to recommit under the precedence of the House is under the order of the seniority on the committee that handles the bill. Uh, if Mr. Fish, for reasons of his own, elects not to offer the motion to recommit, the motion then falls to Mr. Moorhead, uh, who can offer a straight motion to recommit, uh, which would be his mm -hmm. prerogative, and then we would not have the vote uh, on Brady under the scenario that you have uh, outlined. Jim well, yield. who goes further? Uh, did go down the line yes, after Mr. Moorhead? It's Fish, Moorhead, Hyde, Hyde Simpson, is for Brenner. Brady. Hyde Brady? is for Brady. Who goes next? I go after Hyde. You're for Brady. I'm for Brady. McCollum, who's against Brady, goes he after He goes back me. to Staggers. And Geekus goes after Sounds McCollum. fair to me. Well, actually, since you're not next to the line of command, there'd probably be no reason for you to be consulted with on this motion to recommit anyway. I would imagine so. It's clearly a decision, Mr. Chairman, for Mr. Fish, if he wanted to make it. And obviously, he's, to this point, not willing right. to do that. Any other questions of Mr. Sensen, brother? Thank you very much. Mr. The next witness will be the Honorable Gentleman from New York, the Honorable Charles Schumer. Mr. Schumer. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Chairman. And uh, I see that my chairman, Mr. Brooks, has left me about this much of a cigar, <laughs> which may be a metaphor for... Uh, I think that might be a warning. Yeah, well, a warning for the debate. But in all seriousness, Mr. Chairman, I would first like to thank this committee for their concern and care about uh, crafting a fair rule it's a very difficult one, at least in my experience, which is not as great as many of you. I've never seen a situation where creating the simple words, creating a fair rule is as difficult as this is. I'd also like to thank my chairman of the Judiciary Committee. His views are diametrically opposed to mine, and he has been completely fair and straight and upfront about the whole issue, and I very much appreciate that. Uh, as well as, I might say, uh, the Speaker of the House, who is in a similar position, I would say the exact same things. Let me say first, uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, to me, at least, uh, given the difficulties you have, there are a number of guidelines, I guess. The first is, I don't think Staggers and Brady are in equivalent positions. Brady has passed a subcommittee. Brady has passed a full committee. There have been extensive hearings on Brady. That is not true of the Staggers Amendment. And so I suppose I would say that uh, given that, that my first preference on a rule would be not even to allow a Staggers Amendment. It was defeated in the various committees. To me, it is a ruse. I know that others will disagree, but I think anyone who studies and looks and examines the words of the Staggers Amendment would come to the viewpoint that it is simply intended to kill Brady, that there can't be an instant check in any state but Virginia, that in all the other 49 states there will be no check at all, and it is just not, uh, it is, it is not, it does not do what it purports to do, 
What it really is intended to do is kill Brady. Um, so, I don't, you know, uh, in an ideal world, in my view, there shouldn't even be a Staggers Amendment, but I understand that there are large numbers of members, 100 co-sponsors, etc. That's not going to happen. My second choice would be a King of the Hill rule, which puts Staggers first and Brady second. Um, that was, uh, that would be something that could work, but the problem, uh, let me just, I'll get to the problems in a minute. Third choice might be to allow an amendment to the stagger substitute, to make it honest. In other words, to allow uh, Brady to be in effect until staggers were to, until an instant check system were actually to be in effect. That would be five to 10 years from now at the minimum. I don't know if we'd ever have an instant check that could meet staggers requirements. Incidentally, the Virginia law does not. And I guess, my fourth choice would be the one that had been mentioned in the previous week, which is uh, the, the motion, uh, the stagger substitute, and then a motion to recommit, which ensured that Brady would come to the floor. Having said those things, Mr. Chairman, those are my descending order in terms of what is good for our side. Um, I would say one other thing, and that is, that I think what has happened here is tactics have changed. The NRA knows it can't defeat Brady. The NRA has real doubts about whether it can defeat Staggers. I think the vote count on that one is neck and neck. But for the first time, they're wondering maybe they can't win the way they usually win. And so what they have done is they've decided to change the focus of the fight to the rule, plain and simple. And they would give members who don't want to come out against Brady, because they know the public is for Brady, they know even gun owners are for Brady, is an opportunity to hide behind a rules fight. And we all know that the rules fights are less clear and can be more obfuscated out there in the public. And so I guess what I would say to you, uh, Mr. Chairman, is while I have my preferences, the one thing I don't want to see happen is that the rules fight replaced the substance fight. We can win on the substance. We will make it clear as both the gentleman from uh, Michigan and the gentleman, I believe, from California in their previous questioning made that if you're gonna vote for staggers, you're killing Brady, that you can't have it both ways. And the members who try to are not uh, doing what they say they're doing, being for both, they're killing Brady. I don't like that rule. I don't like that proposal. It doesn't give an up or down vote on Brady. But I'd rather have that and would be supportive of that than be boggled in a rule, bogged down in a rules fight that would, um, that, would not, that would further hide the issue even more than Staggers does. So in, in, in uh, conclusion, I guess I'd say this is a tough one. The rule that you're talking about the rule that people are saying regular order, in my opinion, gives staggers some advantages. But I think that if forced to choose the substance, we're still willing to take our shot and beat staggers. I think we can. I think with the help of supporters of the Brady Bill, many of whom are on this committee, we will. And, uh, well, I shouldn't say we will. I should say we can, because if in my heart of hearts, if I had to bet all my money, which isn't very much, on what was going to happen, I wouldn't know what to do. It's that close. But uh, rather than give people the subterfuge of a rule to hide behind, which is the NRA strategy, I'd just like to, I, I think that we have to have a vote up or down on the substance. I thank the gentleman for his analogy, uh, uh, because I know how strong uh, the member feels for Brady. Uh, many of us felt that we needed a vote up or down on Brady. But we, too, felt the tactics changing and uh, that the rules fight was going to be the fight that was going to hide the, the fight on, on the substance. And we felt that we were being put in a, a position that we didn't want to be put in. Uh, and uh, so I think that the gentleman's testimony today uh, gives a great uh, deal of help to those of us on the committee that were just trying to find one way to uh, get to the floor and have the fight out, and even though it can't be a, a, a direct vote up or down on Brady, uh, by having a, an up or down vote on Staggers, uh, we can uh, find out you know, where the Brady supporters really are.
So I, I think the gentleman's uh, uh, feeling, uh, and I'm knowing uh, how hard you've worked on this thing, and I know we've been in consultation over the months on this thing, I, I just appreciate your analogy and willing to, to be much more practical on the issue uh, than some people are. You know, when, when you have an emotional issue, uh, all you can see is, is the end results and you, you sometimes don't even look at the traps that are laying in your path, but I think the gentleman has looked at the traps laying in the path and I think he's analyzed this thing very properly. Now, Mr. Chairman, I would say to you, uh, you have bent over backwards to be fair. Sometimes circumstances don't allow you to be as fair as you might mm -hmm. and as fair as you would want to be. Um, and, and yet, you have to realize those circumstances and give it your best shot. I would say this, hopefully Brady will pass the House this week. Because remember, if, you vo if Staggers is voted down under regular order, there is a vote on Brady. That's the only way to get to a vote on Brady. But Mr. Chairman, Brady's going to become law. I can't tell you how or when. There's a tide behind it. The public knows it's right. There will be plenty of opportunities to do Brady. I think this is the best one. And I think we're going to win this time if we work hard at it. But uh, we're not giving up in any way at all. We're going to make the fight on staggers. We're going to let people know if you vote yes on staggers, you're voting no on Brady. And I think by the end of the week, Brady will have passed the House. Once again, I thank the gentleman for his uh, analogy. Mr. Derrick. I thank the gentleman. You, you have helped us a tremendous amount on this committee to try to resolve this. And as I understand it, not to repeat the testimony, but you think uh, just to have uh, Staggers as a substitute and then to have a motion to recommit and, uh, and take our chances on the motion to recommit. And That's you think, not you my think, first, second, third, well, or fourth choice. That, but, but you will feel that you have been treated fairly. Well, I would say that I'd rather have a rule a treated fa I, Yes. I, mean, I will say that the Rules Committee has treated things fairly. I'm, I don't say that that is... Uh, I understand as, it's as, not what you would like. It's not what I would like. It is not what I would like. But, but I'd rather have the fight on the floor on the substance than the fight on the floor on the rule. And since the NRA has shifted its tactics away from staggers and now to the rules, we'll meet them on staggers. Yeah. I commend you. I really do. Thank you. Solomon. Chairman, let me say to my good friend Chuck Schumer that he and I have served uh, for many, many years way back in the State Assembly. We didn't agree on much, but uh, the one thing I have for you, Chuck, is a great deal of admiration and respect because you believe in what you say and you're a man of principle. Uh, it bothers me a little bit when you come in and you, you start uh, criticizing the tactics of the NRA. Uh, the NRA is, a, in my opinion, a reputable organization. I'm a life member of it. And so are many, many community citizens of the upstate New York where I live. Uh, and what they are doing is no different than what you and I do every day. Uh, we strategize. We try to win. But we try to win fairly. And that's why we're here asking for this. I'm just going to say to you, uh, y you have agreed uh, to support this regular order rule, which is the rule of the House. And you have, have said that uh, if you're going to vote for Staggers, you're going to kill Brady. I want you to go on the floor. I want you to make that argument. I'm going to go on the floor and make the exact same argument. If you vote for Staggers, you're killing Brady. And let the chips fall where they may. And let's put these people on the spot that are going to vote yes, yes, or no, no. In other words, make them stand up and be counted. I'm willing to do it. And I fully believe that maybe the majority of my constituents probably support Brady. But we have to stand up and be counted. So I'm going to fight with you for the same thing that you're fighting for and let the chips fall where they may. So let's go with this regular order rule. Thanks. Well, thank you. you uh, my, my fear. We agree on that and we also, we all, I would also say to you that your integrity on, 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 uh, to me is unquestioned and that's why you said what you did. You're not trying to hide. It's yes or no on Brady. So Staggers is the vehicle. Mr. Billinson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd simply like to associate myself with the remarks made by my friend from South Carolina. Your testimony, Mr. Schumer, is extremely helpful to us, and we appreciate it very much, as do we who are strong supporters of the Brady Bill appreciate your strong and very effective support for the bill. Thank you. Mr. Quillen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I remember the fight we had on the savings loan fiasco 
and you fought so hard and so long and so sincere, and it turned out to be a boondoggle. It isn't working. It's a sham. It's a disgrace. You're so sincere here. You're fighting for what you believe is right, fighting for your cause. But don't overlook the fact that there are others in this room, if I may have regular order, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman's entitled to regular order. So Just is remember that there are those in this room who believe differently than you, and we're sincere also. Don't doubt that for a minute, Mr. But there's no question but what we want to be fair about it, and we don't come here by saying we want my preferences one, two, three, four, all on your side. Fight and take your chances. We're going to win. Staggers is going to win. And I question whether you have the, the, the right approach in saying, believe it or not, we're going to pass the Brady Bill one way or the other. Sometime it's going to become law. It may. But Tennessee has a 15-day waiting period. We had three murders over the weekend from handguns. Young men shot square through their head. It isn't working. The seven-day waiting period won't work. So we have a different philosophy. I respect yours, and I know you respect ours. You, you fight hard. Thank you, Mr. Quillen. Uh, all our Brady is not going to end all murders. No waiting period will. It'll end some, and to me, that's good enough. Gentlemen in Texas, Mr. Frost. Well, Mr. Schumer, as, as you're aware, the the NRA has a uh, fairly large membership in my state also, and I think that the rule that uh, you have now agreed to, the regular order, which is the, if I understand, the, uh, the rule that uh, the uh, advocates of the NRA position are seeking, uh, will in fact treat their position fairly, and we'll, do, we'll have a fair fight on the floor and we'll see who wins. And so I think that uh, the regular order rule that uh, this committee, I believe, is going to pass and that uh, you have now said is acceptable to you, I think does treat the advocates of the NRA position fairly. Gentleman from California, Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, nice to see my former banking committee colleague. And uh, Chuck, I think you've done a great job in representing your position on this. Would it have been uh, better if the committee had reported out the Staggers Amendment and offered Brady as a substitute to that? Well, that wasn't the committee's will. The vast majority of the committee, by more than two to one, didn't think uh, that Staggers would work or didn't vote for it and did think Brady would work. Uh, the funny position you're in right here is that, and, and this, this happens, this is not the only issue where it happens, is that having passed the bill out of committee, you then have the, the, the regular order gives the opposing side the chance to get the up or down votes on, uh, on the issue. And as I said, since I think Brady has more impetus than Staggers and has had more support, I would have hoped that the Rules Committee could depart from the regular order to recognize that fact. But well, that would have jeopardized getting any rule to the floor at all and I'd rather have the fight on the merits than on the rules. But Chuck, it seems to me that, that you have offered the solution which the committee, it seems to me, supports at this point, and that's very simply that we have an obligation to let our colleagues know that by voting for Staggers, they're voting against Brady, and then let it fall. And that's the position I support, and I think that's really the way we should go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, Michigan, Mr. Boynia. Mr. McEwen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, I may ask a question I really should have asked the Chairman. Uh, the administration policy today says that they will probably veto a bill if it's by itself, either Staggers or, or Brady, unless it's part of a comprehensive crime package. Do you have any idea as to what the possibilities of the committee coming forward with the rest of the crime package? Uh, we want to move a crime bill with alacrity. Uh, uh, the Chairman He's not here anymore, gone. but uh, we've talked about it, we've talked to it with our leadership, and uh, we hope to start having hearings on the crime bill as soon as the Brady bill is out of the way in my subcommittee and some of the others that have jurisdiction. Um, I would note, so I think there will be, my hope is, just speaking as a subcommittee chairman as well as a member, that we'd have a crime bill on the floor of the House 
some point uh, as soon as possible and not to wait till the very end of session like we did two years ago or last year. I would also say the administration's position is a little bit, uh, you state it basically correctly, but they say there ought to be a crime bill contemporaneous with this bill. Well, I don't quite know what the parameters of contemporaneous are, but they didn't say it had to be part of the same. Okay. Thank you very much. Gentleman Yale. I'd be pleased to. Yeah, I think what the administration said was they would accept the Brady bill and the President's crime package uh, as two bills uh, if they were given to them at the same time. I also uh, would have a, uh, an amendment or a motion to recommit which would include the, uh, the President's crime bill should, uh, should Brady succeed. It would be nice to put them both to him that way. Let, let me just uh, <laughs> cloud the issue further the by uh, reading one sentence from the President's letter today. The President's senior advisors recommend he veto a bill relating to the identification of felons attempting to purchase handguns, including both Brady and Staggers, that is not part of legislation consistent with his comprehensive violent crime control pro proposal, which uh, leaves alternatives for both. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, thank you, Chair. since my good friend from Ohio has read from the administration letter, and I know it's in the record, but just to point out to members, since we see the direction the Rules Committee is headed in, uh, it says, the last paragraph on the front page, with the regard to the Staggers Amendment, the administration notes that unless it is modified, it would require the establishment of a point of purchase system that is different from the system currently being established by the Attorney General, pursuant to the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 88. Um, in other words, it then says it would also ensure, well, they go through a whole bunch of things in this paragraph which show that Staggers is not contemporaneous and doesn't work with the present system that they are trying to implement that was that this Congress voted for in the McCollum Amendment, 1988. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to thank the gentleman because I do believe you've been immensely helpful coming from the same philosophical point of view that I do, a strong support of the Brady Bill and recognizing that an amend, a, a, a rule that would allow the Brady Bill to come to the floor with an amendment uh, by Staggers would be a fair rule. I'm troubled by one thing, though, in that you give your long list of preferred rules suggesting that they would be more fair uh, than, than what we are calling the regular order, uh, suggesting that we will never have a vote on the, on, that it's possible, that we would never have a straight up or down vote on the Brady Bill itself. Uh, I, don't, I don't perceive of it that way. It is quite clear to me that if the Brady Bill, as reported out by the committee, comes to the floor, uh, that and, and Staggers is made in order that Staggers would be a substitute for Brady. You cannot have it both ways. If you vote for Staggers, you are voting for Staggers to replace Brady. You are voting against the Brady bill. Uh, so that is, in fact, a straight up or down vote. It, in fact, you, you vote no on Staggers in order to support the Brady bill. If Staggers is defeated, there will be another vote on the Brady bill. If Staggers passes, it will be the will of this House and the will of all of the members who have voted for Staggers to defeat the Brady bill. I think it is absolutely clear and there, there can be no misperception about it. Well, I would agree with the gentleman from Missouri to the effect that voting for Staggers kills Brady, plain and simple. And the gentleman from New York has agreed to that as well, my colleague, Jerry. Mr. Gordon. Just add my compliments to Chuck's um, thoughtful presentation that's helped us. General lady from New York. I want to thank Chuck as well, and I, I, I think it's probably not overstating the case that Chuck made first, that we, we're commendably looking for fairness here. Yeah. And the fact that we are even considering an amendment that failed the subcommittee and the committee, and we're, we're talking about advantaging it yet again, seems to me to be more than fair. And uh, I certainly appreciate your fine work in this regard, and also your comments that Brady will eventually be law. Thank you. Support again, that. Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, uh, your testimony is meant more in this committee than you probably will know because we were very, we all wanted to reach a certain end, but we're afraid that our action might be uh, mistaken by the Brady supporters. Yeah. No, I understand where you're coming from, and as I said, the committee has always tried to be fair. Um, sometimes circumstances, as I say, don't allow you to be as fair as you would want to be or might be. Yeah. And, uh, We've had, you know, in this area of gun control, it's been a tough fight all along against very formidable opposition. Uh, and it's been an uphill fight. Uphill fight doesn't, doesn't deter us or scare us. Thank you very much. 
Gentleman New York, Mr. Uh, Solomon. Chairman, if uh, Mr. Sensenbrenner forgot to ask unanimous consent for his full statement to be submitted for the record, without if I objection. Might do so. Without objection. The Honorable Bill McCollum. The Honorable Holly Staggers from Virginia, West Virginia. Chairman, can we have a panel of. Uh, Whatever you say. Uh, who, who would you like in that? Jack Fields. It looks like a pincer movement to me. <laughs> Mike Kopetsky. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. That's McCollum that? was supposed to be part of that. Okay. Uh, you uh, be recognized, Mr. Staggers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, let me thank you for the opportunity to be here. I do have a prepared statement. I'd ask you now, Mr. Without objection, the gentleman from West Virginia's entire statement will appear on the record. I, I do have an amendment also. I'd ask that be made part of the record. You have a what? An amendment uh, so that the that I would like to have offered as a substitute so that the... Well, we'll make a part of the record, right. sir. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, it's been talked about uh, about my uh, uh, amendment in committee and in subcommittee. Uh, in fact, my amendment was not offered a subcommittee. I'm not on the subcommittee. Uh, I did ask uh, through a written letter uh, and through correspondence otherwise to testify before the hearings uh, of the subcommittee. I was denied uh, the, the ability to, in fact, testify at the hearings uh, to present my concept. Um, there was a vote of 2311, which has already been uh, testified to here. But I will point out that uh, in the full House, I have over 100, or I have 102 uh, co-sponsors to my amendment. Uh, we request that the committee make an order, uh, uh, my amendment as amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 7, uh, as reported from the judiciary. I've understood that that's probably what's going to happen. And I would also see it as, as the process of regular order. If I can explain my amendment, because there seems to be some misconceptions, especially from the, the last uh, person who testified, what mine would do would be to have the Justice Department institute a toll-free number. The dealer, gun dealer, would have um, the requirement to call that toll-free number to find out, in fact, if, if a person was uh, able purchase, uh, eligible to purchase a handgun. Uh, at that point, um, the information that would be conveyed to that dealer would be that he's, he's either, he or she's either approved or disapproved. Mine would also accelerate the computerization uh, and updating of the criminal history records. Uh, we are already have a mandate uh, of 5 percent of, the, of the, the justice funds which go to the states uh, that they use that for uh, computerizing and updating the records. Mine would double that to 10 percent. I think that my concept is superior. I've been hearing that this is a ruse, that uh, this is not really sincere. And I will tell you that I believe that mine is a superior concept. Mine does require a criminal history background check, and it does not leave it to the discretion of the police officers, which uh, the Brady concept would do. I have never contended that uh, my system requires that all records need to be completed before it is implemented. In fact, uh, both um, systems would uh, would use the current records available. Um, the mine, in fact, would uh, accelerate the, the updating and the computerization of, the, of those records. Both, uh, as I said, have, do use a, the same database. Mine, I think, is superior because it, it in fact, will accelerate that. Finally, um, uh, I think it was Mr. Sensenbrenner who, who talked about how much mine would cost. I would also ask that, um, that the committee be made part of the record. The CBO estimate that um, uh, was completed Friday afternoon, uh, and I'd ask unanimous consent that may be. Without objection, the entire statement will appear on the record, and any uh, <coughs> material the gentleman wants to put in. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. It, it, it talks about the, the mining would cost between 5 and $10 million, and that would include implementation of, um, of the instantaneous check. Uh, it also, in that letter, will talk about a civil right of action. And there was some concern about that. I know there's been concern in the Justice Department. In trying to make mine a better bill, I've removed that and made uh, technical amendments to, to remove that part of my bill. In fact, my amendment, which I'm asking that uh, you may be, that, that you would make uh, as um, uh, an amendment, is different than what was submitted at committee uh, in that regard, is that it would not have the civil right of action, which, uh, in fact, uh, should lessen the cost and lessen some of the problems the Justice Department may have. And if you look at uh, what CBO has, has said about the cost of the two different concepts, they're, in fact, exactly the same. Um, if, in fact, people would utilize Brady the seven days to, to implement a full records check, Brady concept would e actually even cost more than mine. 
So with, with that, I, I, would, I would ask that the committee, and it seems like that's the direction you're going to go, would be to make my uh, amendment as an amendment in nature of a substitute. I'd also ask that uh, because of the nature of the debate and because of what has already been acknowledged, the emotions involved, that uh, no other amendments be allowed to mine. Uh, I would suggest that uh, in the debate that we be allowed at least one hour. Uh, and I would yield to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Fields. The Honorable Jack Fields, gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know uh, the committee has been uh, dealing with this issue, issue for a long period of time. It's lunch. Uh, I'm here primarily to support Mr. Staggers and to respond to questions, but let me just briefly say the objective of Brady and Staggers are exactly the same, and that is to keep uh, criminals from purchasing handguns. And the question becomes, which process works? I personally believe the facts dictate that waiting periods do not work. I do think that Mr. Staggers, in coming up with this instantaneous verifi verification, uh, is the superior approach in terms of answering the objective. And our problem, to be quite honest with this committee, has been fighting perception and fighting emotion. And uh, I've heard the testimony of previous witnesses talk about the perception uh, and, and creating a perception that uh, somehow we have the upper hand in the process, and I don't see it. Uh, I've been working this issue very diligently on the Republican side, and I feel that we are the underdogs, <laughs> vast underdogs. And I say that because the Brady concept has been in the public domain for years. Uh, the American people identified that concept with answering the objective. There is not a great body of information about the instantaneous verification. So from that vantage point, I think that we are an underdog. I have to also uh, confess at times I think we've been treated unfairly by the press. You know, what's new? But to me, that makes us an underdog. And then, as has already been pointed out, uh, this issue has been uh, debated uh, ad infinitum at the Judiciary Committee level. Uh, the Staggers approach lost, so to somehow come and create the perception that uh, the Brady concept is being treated unfairly with the normal process, I think uh, begs the facts and uh, begs the issue. And I would just hope that uh, people would uh, listen very carefully to what Chairman Brooks had said and what Mr. Staggers, and that we stay within the normal process. Thank you, Mr. Field. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for this opportunity to be here today. I want to uh, uh, speak in support of the Sagger's uh, uh, rules, uh, proposals, and also I want to commend the Chairman Brooks uh, for uh, who was on, wasn't on the prevailing side for allowing this uh, measure to come forward so early in the session, as well as Speaker Foley himself uh, for putting this on, high on the agenda for, for this session. There has been some uh, testimony, a sense that uh, we won't, that sort of that uh, those in support of Brady won't get to Brady, won't get the opportunity to vote on Brady. Well, I think that this is part of the emotionalism attached to the entire debate because ultimately what we do as members of the House of Representatives is we don't, is that we do vote on a proposed law. That we're not, this isn't a popularity contest between Mr. Staggers and Mr. Brady or the NRA. We're not voting in terms of popularity of any individual or organization. We're, we're voting on whether to adopt language into the United States Code. And as such, um, then we should look at, it, look at our regular processes of order of, of addressing or adopting a, a law. And uh, I don't think that this piece of legislation, either one of them for that matter, rises to the level of, of significance or importance that, that some sort of special rule uh, is, is important or, or is necessary. And we're not talking about a, uh, an amendment to the Constitution or a declaration of, of, of war. We're, we're talking about a, a, a regular bill and the normal process of, of, of the uh, legislative process, certainly emotionally charged, no question about that. But basically, we are going, I think we ought to use the regular process of addressing piece of legislation. Because as Mr. Schumer, any other member of the House knows that this is probably the order that's going to, to prevail and should pre prevail uh, given the nature of this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Kapetsky. The Honorable Bill McCollum, Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate uh, being able to come up and testify today for you briefly. I very much favor, of course, a rule that allows the Staggers Amendment. I have historically felt that the Brady Bill was the wrong way to go because in all of the time I've been on the Crime Subcommittee working this issue, 
no evidence has ever come before us that convinced me that a seven-day waiting period was really necessary. Uh, the bottom line of all of it has been the fact that if you are going to try to get at the felons who are making these purchases in the gun stores, you're going to have to uh, go through a system using the telephone type of thing, a telecommunications system like Virginia uses, no matter whether you have a Brady bill or you have staggers or you whatever you have. And that is because that the idea of getting the person's name who comes in and, and putting it into a system like that is the only real way you can check. NCIC system, they call it, the police do. And what the evidence also has shown us is, and the Treasury or a Justice Department studies show this, is that if you're going to have a more thorough check, looking for fingerprints, you're doing something more than looking for that name, you've got to have at least 30 days. So you can do in a very few minutes or a few hours by the telephone system what you can do in seven days. You can't do as much as 30. And I really think on the balance that the fact of the matter is that 30 days is way too long. Nobody's going to put up with that, so that's why it's not being offered. Seven days becomes a very long cooling off period, longer than most states would ever consider, whatever your feelings are about that. And I do favor cooling off periods. And you're left with saying, well, why uh, seven days when you've got a real loss in my judgment, and I think a lot of others, of a, a certain amount of the rights, but not necessarily a constitutional issue, but just the right of a citizen to be able to go and buy that gun whenever they want to when they feel threatened. And some people say, well, why should you? You should depend on the police. But I think a lot of Americans feel the same way I do, and that is that you shouldn't be take that right shouldn't be taken away from you to do that if you feel threatened personally. You should be able to make that judgment unless there is some overwhelming uh, and countervailing public policy reason to take it away. And taking it away for a, a day or for a few hours, there is a reason to do that because of the fact that we can make this check. But taking it away for seven days doesn't make any sense. And that's why I think that it's important to offer staggers. It is a complement to what past Congress that I offered a couple of years ago. And I would urge the, uh, the Rules Committee to adopt it as an add-on, uh, at least allow it to be offered, I should say, as an add-on to that process. We, we need to improve our records. We need to do a lot of other things with them. Uh, but Brady doesn't offer anything as a pure bill that's of any greater value than what would, could be done under the Staggers proposal. That's the bottom line. And I would urge the Rules Committee to allow the amendment to be in order, uh, to allow it to be offered in the normal course and fashion of things, not playing a game with King of the Hill. Let's just go through the process of saying this is an amendment, it's a substitute amendment. It can be offered. If it passes, fine. It is the substitute. Now, there's always, of course, the opportunity for, I guess, motions to recommit under the normal procedures. But let's not get into a business of going back and forth ping-ponging. Let's, let's just do uh, this in a normal fashion and give the, the members of our body the chance to act on this. I think that's the most responsible way to go. And I, I think logic, unrelated to emotion, uh, will dictate uh, the staggers uh, to be adopted. But I don't know that. It's obviously a very emotional issue. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions? Mr. Billen. Mr. Solomon. <coughs> Bill, you were late coming in, and uh, the other gentleman, I think, sat through all of the other, uh, the other testimony. But uh, with, uh, with a regular order rule, which allows for the, uh, the Brady Amendment to be uh, the uh, text, the base text, and the Staggers Amendment to be allowed as a, as a full substitute to it, with a, um, a clear-cut motion to recommit with instructions. Um, is the regular order, which this House has operated under for many years, and uh, I, I think we all understand that uh, if there was a, an effort uh, made to play around with a motion to recommit to uh, uh, put out a rule that had a uh, King of the Hill type uh, arrangement, I think we have the votes, in my own opinion, without question, to kill the rule. Uh, I don't know, uh, of course, I wouldn't mind that, I guess, but uh, uh, nevertheless, if we are going to be fair, and I think we've heard most of the members on that side of the aisle uh, talk about the fairness issue, uh, I, for one, would support a regular order rule that does just exactly what Chairman Brooks came in here and, uh, and asked for, because I think that would be fair, and then we'll let the chips fall where they may. I don't know whether we've got the votes to pass Mr. Stagger's um, uh, substitute. I hope we do. Uh, I think it's nip and tuck. Uh, 
But I am convinced we could, we could uh, defeat that rule. But if we're going to be fair, if we're going to work together, I think uh, that's the direction we ought to go in. Well, if the gentleman would yield on his uh, time, I think it's very important that we do follow the fairness in this because uh, we are dealing with something very sensitive out there. Uh, there is no assurance, of course. It is nip and tuck on the votes. Uh, but I think the public, all sides, need to feel that this was the normal process we were working here, and it, it passes or fails on that basis, and let us right. all get down and just do our work. And I, I think the members of the committee will do that. I hope you will. Anyway. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Collins. I commend you for the fine work you do and, and have done to bring this before us today. In the uh, non-emotional way that you brought it to us, and I think that's the way this bill should come to the floor of the House. And I commend all of you. Thank you. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I compliment uh, all of you. I think Jack Fields really said it best in clearly stating that we have the same goal as those who are advocating the Brady Bill. And I think that some people would uh, come to the conclusion based on what we've seen in the media over the past uh, several years, because Brady, as you say, has really been on the front burner, that people who are looking at another alternative to address the problem may not be as sincere. And uh, so I appreciate your doing that. When uh, you all did a special order the other night on the House floor, I was struck when I heard Mr. Stagger say that he's not a member of the National Rifle Association. And uh, there has been a perception that what you're offering here is simply a ploy by the National Rifle Association to prevent waiting periods from going into effect. And I wondered if you would uh, like to elaborate at all uh, on that question of your membership in the NRA, which frankly surprised me. No, I'm not a member, and um, I resent uh, when other members question my integrity, that I'm in some way trying to uh, deceive people. I think that this is a better alternative. I think the CBO, uh, the, in fact, was, which was addressed to Mr. Schumer, uh, not to me, he requested it, uh, bears me out that that was one of the criticisms, in fact, was the cost, that mine was too costly. In fact, it shows that both uh, procedures will cost pretty much the same. Uh, and I've worked with, with Bill McCollum since I've been on judiciary. Uh, when he first initiated this, it made a lot of sense to me because in my personal experience, when I walk into a department store and pull, and pull out a credit card, they can check my credit. We have over 77,000 credit card transactions uh, monthly in this nation. Uh, technology obviously exists. Uh, you know, why can't we do it is what I always thought. And with there are only 77,000 credit card transactions a month. monthly. It seems to me that members of my family would fill that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. Uh, it, Probably you know. 77 million, I would guess. Uh, yeah, you're right, 77 million. Would the gentleman yield? Yes, sir. Let's I'll just point out that that, uh, that this, CBO this report uh, staggered that you had there also states that uh, over half of the uh, federal government's criminal history records are already fully automated and that 60 percent of the 45 million state records are already computerized and we are well on our way and you know it goes right back to the old saying you know uh, guns don't commit crimes people do and if we get them computerized and we know who those felons are uh, we're going we're, we're taking big huge steps in the right direction i think that's why i support your amendment I think. If I could just uh, ask uh, another question, there is, you've addressed the cost question here, Bucky, and I think that it's important for us to recognize that many people are saying that it would be a decade before this could get online uh, in a nationwide way, and I wondered what kind of response we have to this, to those who say, gosh, you know, it's just delaying this process. Uh, how long do you think it will take, and what kind of uh, empirical evidence do you have to support it? I think that um, it the gentleman raises a good point. I think that a lot of people forget that what uh, Bill McCollum has done on the committee uh, in the judiciary, that he has mandated that states start computerizing the records. Uh, this is a two-year mandate. Mine, would, in fact, would accelerate that. And what we're starting off with is the same database. I'm not saying that, that mine is going to be the perfect solution. Uh, I've never held it out. We will take the same database th that the Brady concept will take. And so to say that we're going to have to implement this, we're talking about simple technology, which I've already referred to, the telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as the records go, if in fact we're going to get the perfect bill, if we're going to get the perfect solution, and that would entail fingerprinting, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, and that's the secondary verification that the Justice talks about uh, in their 1989 uh, report, then that probably will take five or six years. What this will do is in the meantime, it'll accelerate, it'll, it'll force the administration uh, to maybe quicken their pace uh, a little bit, but it's, it's doable um, as far as um, um, as empirical data, I'm not sure, Mr. McCollum. Well, you, I, I'd like to respond because there's mixing up in all these figures of apples and oranges. Back, back when an amendment I offered passed about two and a half years ago, the Justice Department did a study, and the study said if we're going to fully implement a system for immediate and accurate verification of felons who go to purchase handguns, uh, that's going to require a fingerprint system ultimately. It's going to require a computerization of fingerprints and an update of a lot of records. It's going to take time because all the, rec all the records aren't good. It's, as the gentleman from New York said a moment ago, though, 60 percent of them are aboard. Uh, there are many things already there to use. And so all of that dollar amount and time amount that critics of, of the Steiger's proposal put forward is based upon the complete, full, ultimate implementation of this program that the Justice Department set forth. What not about the, the use Steiger's of the, amendment? What not about the, the use of the uh, telephone touch tone technology? I mean, it seems to me that I could go out here and use the telephone right now well, for that, that, as long as there's some kind of system. There, there, into. there could be that could be done too. All the technology exists to do these things. The question mm -hmm. is, what is is the most cost efficient way to go? And the most cost efficient way for the short run. Uh, however, it, it has its failures in an accuracy is a telephone telecommunication name check at the point of purchase. The fact of the matter is that's all Brady does. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the real rub and why I say we're mixing apples and oranges is that ultimately a lot of us want to go much further. Uh, we think resources should be devoted to this. We're all aboard, as Jack Fields says, the idea of stopping felons from purchasing guns at gun dealers. Uh, but what we don't see is why uh, the critics are wanting to use our goodwill and our interest in, in putting money in this over the long haul to criticize us for saying, look, all you can do in seven days under your bill, under the Brady bill, can now be done under staggers in just about seven minutes or seven hours and not at a bunch of costs. We're talking about tel uh, just the telephone check. Again, that's the only thing that's really going to be done because that's the only system we have, the only records we have that can be tapped and the only method that can be used now even under Brady's seven-day waiting. Well, 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 the gentleman, you'll, the, I think that what I see this is, is that we are not offering the perfect bill. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is we're offering a better alternative. Yeah. And I think that's the way it has to be right. looked at, is that we will do more than what the Brady concept would do. I suspect that all of you support the concept of uh, going ahead and ensuring that people don't have this luxury, uh, if you will, to vote for Staggers and Brady, that you want to make it clear that someone who votes for the Staggers Amendment is voting against the Brady Bill. And if that is the case, this hotly debated issue over the recommittal motion is not necessary at all. Yeah, I have no problems with them, um, and I will advocate that also. Okay. Just Thank you. Just for one second, uh, you mentioned that uh, there was a slight difference when you submitted your, your amendment for the record. And if we reference uh, H.R. 1412, which I guess was your original text, is it significantly the same if we re reference that in the rule? It's, it's significantly the same except for the civil right of action against, uh, I guess, the Attorney General's office. And that's the only major change that I have, which is actually, I think, you know, for most people who criticize my bill, an improvement. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, that's the only, the only substantive difference. That's the only change at all. And there's some technical amendments, you know, because of the nature of the, of the amendment. But that's the only change. Right. Uh, just to get back to my initial point, was there, uh, did the NRA reject your membership for any reason? <laughs> <laughs> No, I've just never replied. I, I mean, I've, I've always owned a gun, and uh, I've always been uh, You've got an sport. application for you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McEwen. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. Thanks, the next witness will be the Honorable Austin Murphy, the Congressman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may I ask one question? Uh, uh, when you refer to regular order, would it mean following general debate that you would then consider the uh, Brady measure and vote on it and then bring Staggers as a substitute, or would you bring Staggers first as an amendment, vote on it, and then consider Brady? No, uh, regular order in this case would be, Brady would be regular texts um, uh, substituted by Staggers, uh, period. And then if Staggers uh, fails, fails then, then it would be a vote on Brady. Final passage. Final, final passage. It would be right. final passage. 
if staggers carried, it would still be, quote, final passage. That's right. Okay. okay. So then Thank there's you. a motion to recommit with instructions by the minority. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to state one thing that those who may vote for staggers, you are, you are logically concluding they are against Brady and that those who vote against staggers are logically for Brady. And I would like to say to the committee that is not necessarily so. It may be that there are some members who legitimately believe that any type of control that they would vote yes for. They would vote yes for Stagger, they would vote yes for Brady because they believe in some type of controls. I do not necessarily believe that, but I'm pointing that out from what I have heard from some of my colleagues. Second, that those who vote against Staggers may be doing it and still be legitimately against the Brady Bill, and that the reason they would vote, vote against Staggers is because of the economical cost being thrust down to local governments. So like if they could vote no on Staggers and then no on Final Passage. And so. no on Final Passage, sure. and not yeah. be contrary to their, to their philosophy. Sure. Uh, okay, what I wanted to point out, that, that following that, uh, may I suggest, and you probably have already concluded, that the final recommittal motion following your regular order as you have outlined it mr chairman then would be a motion to recommit by the senior most member of either side of the aisle who disagrees with the final measure as having passed except the and then commit with or without instructions the motion to recommit is a, a motion for the minority historically a uh, number opposed, right. Who are opposed. Right. Well, I suppose it would work out the same way. But it, it, Mr. Sensenbrenner was pointing out that it may not get down to him. And, and in the event that it, he would disagree, it would seem to me that in fairness to have the rule fair in all respects, that the final motion should be a recommittal motion given the senior most member then in the minority, if you will, who disagrees with the final passage. That's normal. That's okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Now, I... Now, to further muddy the waters, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to propose an amendment. Uh, in Pennsylvania, we do have a 48-hour waiting period. It has worked extremely well. I have purchased handguns. I go into the shop in one of my five counties I represent. I have to fill out a very extensive application. I then have to return, and it generally amounts to the third day out. Uh, where we then go back and you actually pick up the firearm. It works. But I'm suggesting to you and I suggest to the members that a seven-day waiting period seems to be quite objectionable to many members of the House, possibly a majority in the House. And that therefore, by, by rising or falling on the seven-day issue, when we have many states that have a two-day waiting period that have proven quite successful, I would suggest that is minimal as a single day, but I, my amendment is a 48-hour period, would work because the, the thing that works, that would work, that would is that a person would have to come back to the store, single day. whether it be an hour later or a day later. The person who wants to buy a firearm for some criminal purpose doesn't want to go in and sign his name, walk away, and come back an hour later or a day later or certainly not 48 hours later to pick up the firearm. However, a person who legitimately wants to purchase a oh, firearm, he's, going, he's, he's in Colorado, he's on a hunting trip, he's in Alaska, he's on a hunting trip, and he, he wants to legitimately purchase a handgun to carry with him, which many of us who are hunting do, uh, would not have to wait then seven days prior. He forgot his weapon at home, uh, his, his, his firearm. He wants to buy it, and I think that seven days is too long a period to wait. And I'd like to propose that my amendment is a 48-hour period and that the thing it would accomplish, you have to go back to the store and that would, uh, got three days. Uh, that would stop the illicit purchaser. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Mr. Chairman, let me just say Mr. to Solomon. the gentleman of Pennsylvania, you have excellent taste in tie class, so I got on one just like it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Solomon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's quite a fraternity. <laughs> The uh, next uh, gentleman will be the Honorable Michael Oxley of Ohio. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I'll be brief and uh, would ask that my prepared uh, remarks be made part of the record. Without objection, the gentleman from Ohio's complete statement will appear on the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
The purpose of uh, an amendment that I seek to uh, have uh, made in order uh, is to cover a situation that was brought to my attention by an old friend, uh, matter of fact, a former law partner uh, back home in Ohio uh, who attends many of these gun shows. There are a lot of those around. Many of them are, of course, attended by gun collectors, people who uh, buy uh, antique uh, weapons and these kinds of things. And uh, his comment to me was, while he did not necessarily oppose the concept of a waiting period and felt that it may have some, uh, uh, some use, uh, he was concerned that in a gun show kind of a situation, it would, it would make it quite difficult, as, as a matter of fact, even impossible uh, for those kinds of collectors to actually uh, uh, participate in a gun show. In many cases, the licensed dealers come there. Uh, this is not the kind of place where you're going to get uh, Freddie Felon walking in uh, to, uh, to buy a, uh, a handgun uh, illegally. Uh, quite the contrary, uh, the, I think the uh, perception is that these are uh, people who are uh, gun collectors and uh, who are uh, law-abiding citizens uh, who ought to have an opportunity to, uh, to go to these gun shows and to purchase uh, guns under those circumstances. So what my bill or what my amendment would do, uh, in, well, first of all, I tried to work out so we could just simply exempt gun shows, and frankly, it was just difficult. We worked with legislative council. And it was just difficult to do that. So the, the approach I would have would be that the individual, in anticipation of attending a gun show, could get uh, a uh, permit, if you will, that would be good for 10 days, uh, and that he would be then uh, could show that permit at the, uh, at the uh, gun show, um, having already had the uh, necessary seven-day uh, waiting period uh, ahead of time. He could go into a licensed gun dealer, any licensed gun dealer, uh, and uh, would uh, apply for a uh, purchase of a handgun as he would under the uh, proposal, the Brady proposal. Uh, and then uh, if he checked out uh, even before the seven days, then he would be able to uh, get that permit and then attend the gun show. Um, I just think that it makes good sense. Uh, some, and I, by the way, I support the uh, Brady bill. Uh, I supported the Brady bill uh, two years ago. I support it now. Uh, and uh, I think that this would, uh, and while some supporters of the Brady Bill would consider this a, a, a major loophole, I think it makes good sense to, to allow those kinds of things to, uh, to go on um, in, uh, in the normal course of business when we have these kinds of gun shows, and would ask the Rules Committee to take that under consideration. Thank you. Any questions, gentlemen, for Ohio? Just a quick comment, Mike. Mr. Gordon. Uh, um, even if this, I think you have a reasonable amendment, it may not be possible to make it uh, in order today. I hope that you will continue to pursue uh, it, it during the process. I think it makes makes sense. Well, I thank the gentleman, and uh, particularly from the nod from my friend from Missouri as well. I I, uh, I think that it does make sense, and, and obviously it would only apply to the Brady kind of situation, and that's why the the amendment is crafted d directly at the Brady proposal as opposed to Staggers. Uh, and obviously a lot depends on, on the uh, situation as it develops in the Rules Committee, what kind of rule you craft and whether, in fact, Brady at some point would be voted on. And I understand the, the uh, legislative difficulties that uh, you gentlemen have. Uh, but I do think it's something uh, worth pursuing. Gentleman from New York, Mr. Solomon. I ju just, uh, are, are you prohibited now under the Brady language from doing this? In other words, uh, could I go into a gun store and... Uh, uh, you, in effect, you could really fill out a, an application uh, under, pres under, under the present language in the bill. Oh, the they could still go ahead and, and process it, even though the, the sale itself, money hasn't changed hands. But uh, uh, are you prohibited from doing that? Uh, well, I guess not, except that you, uh, in, in this kind of situation, let's say you are anticipating a gun show that's coming up next month. Right and you plan to attend, and you may very well want to purchase an antique weapon or whatever it may be. Um, if, if you were not to do this, um, if the law did not permit you, then you'd simply go to the, the Brady Bill, having passed, assuming, mm -hmm. you would go to the gun show and have to go through the same seven-day waiting period as one would if he went to a, a gun store. Uh, so the idea would be to try to uh, facilitate that for collectors uh, and, uh, and to make it uh, easier for them. Uh, again, I think in real life you don't find uh, the bad guys going to gun shows. Uh, at least in my experience, uh, these, are, these are hunters, they're sportsmen, they're collectors. Uh, not the kind of people, frankly, that the Brady Bill seeks to uh, keep uh, guns uh, from the hands of, and I just think it makes good sense. 
Jim has got a good amendment. Thank you. Mr. Quella? No question. Thank you very much, Mr. Oxley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Honorable Kurt Walden of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to appear before this distinguished panel today. I ask unanimous consent that my statement be made a part of the record. Without objection, the gentleman's entire statement will appear on the record. Mr. Chairman, I'm not here as a member of the Judiciary Committee, and I'm not here on behalf of either of the major special interest groups advocating the various pieces of legislation that will be before us tomorrow. I am here as one of 435 members of the House that uh, faces uh, constituents back home who, uh, who believe that something needs to be done about the, uh, the, uh, the crime situation in this country as it relates to handguns. And I respect the views, views of both sides. As a matter of fact, if we took a poll of all of the members of Congress who support both bills, it would be overwhelmingly in favor of some type of action at the federal level. There is simply a disagreement over what will work and how it will work. I happen to believe that a, an instantaneous uh, background check is absolutely nece necessary uh, and, uh, and uh, believe that that's a proper course to go. However, uh, when the McCollum substitute was offered two years ago, I opposed it because I felt it was nothing more than a study and, in fact, would not in a, uh, address the issue of uh, handgun proliferation, and I supported the Brady, uh, the Brady Bill at that time. Mr. Chairman, I'm here today to offer what I think is a common sense approach. Uh, that will allow the American people to see that we in the Congress are capable of doing something about the issue of, uh, of gun control in, in this country. Uh, my approach is perhaps uh, too common sense and too simple that it will be rejected by the, uh, by the membership of perhaps this committee or the, or the full House. What I propose is taking the best of both bills, Mr. Chairman. And in fact, I have made uh, no modifications to either of the proposals, but I in fact I propose a, an amendment in the nature of a substitute uh, to H.R. 7 that would implement the, uh, the Staggers bill immediately and would require the Attorney General within six months to certify to Congress that in fact the, uh, the hotline is in fact operational or uh, ready to be operational. And if in fact that's not the case, the provision of the Brady bill, Brady bill in their entirety would take place immediately and would stay in place in full force and effect until such time as a, a national instantaneous uh, background check system was in fact put in place in all 50 states. I think it's common sense. Uh, I think it offers the best of uh, both of these issues and I think perhaps more importantly it's doable. Uh, I would ask the, the committee uh, with all due respects to consider making my amendment in order uh, and once again uh, I have not sought uh, nor would I seek the approval or support of either of the major groups out there. Uh, what I think is important is we approach this issue in a rational way and all come together in trying to find uh, an approach that we can all agree upon uh, to deal with the, uh, the handgun issue. Those who oppose the instantaneous background check say it's not doable. Uh, the time period is unrealistic. Well I say let's put their feet to the fire. Let's pass legislation that gives them a set period of time and gives the Attorney General the ability to certify whether or not that is in fact the case. And if that's not the case, then the, uh, the uh, requirements of the Brady Bill take effect immediately and until such time as an instantaneous program is in fact uh, put into place. And I thank you for your, uh, allowing me this opportunity. Thank you very much, Congressman. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? Let me just say to the gentleman, he's, uh, as I told him the other day, he's one of the hardest working, most sincere members of this Congress, and, uh, and I respect him. You have a, uh, you have a question. I, I don't have your amendment, but it says uh, here that the amendment to provide that after the six months, the Attorney General will decide whether the instant check system is functional. Does that mean operational, or it does says, it mean, it says, it mean feasible? Uh, I believe the exact wording, well, here it is. It says, ready for operation pursuant to this section. Okay. Okay, Kurt, that's the one thing uh, where I think we, you may have a problem when you say six months because uh, in that CBO letter, I think, which may be laying uh, to your right there, it says that uh, over half of the federal government's criminal history records are fully automated now and that 60 percent of the state records are, but um, it doesn't seem to me you can get, you can get the other 40 percent of the state and the other 50 percent of the federal automated within that six-month period. That's a short time. Well, I, Sometime I, I, you ought to maybe think about expanding that to a year, and, uh, which, would, which would really give them a chance to make it functional or operational. I, I, I respect the gentleman and, and, and uh, consider his opinions uh, very highly in all of my efforts here in Washington, but, but I think the point here is that those who are arguing against the instantaneous check, the Staggers proposal, believe that it is nothing more than an attempt to derail the, the uh, Brady Bill. Uh, I happen to disagree with that, knowing the members who are very uh, uh, supportive of the uh, Staggers uh, effort uh, are sincere in their effort to implement an instantaneous background check and I believe that it is doable but I think we've got to hold uh, 
uh, the Attorney General's feet to the fire, and I think we've got to show the people of this country that we are serious about this issue. And I think tying the two together does that. Uh, perhaps it puts people in an uncomfortable situation because it seems as though the only thing I see on Capitol Hill for the last two weeks is a complete polarization of the Congress. And what I predict will happen is that neither of these efforts will become law, and that's unfortunate for the American people. Thank you very much, Mr. Weldon. Any other members wishing to testify? The committee will be in receipt of a motion. Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Derrick. I move the committee grant H.R. 7 a rule providing one hour of general debate equally divided and controlled by the chairman and ranking minority member of the Judiciary Committee. The rule makes in all the Judiciary Committee amendment the nature of a substitute now printed in the bill as an original bill for purposes of amendment. The rule makes in order only one amendment consisting of the text printed in the report to accompany the rule if offered by Representative Staggers or his designee, debatable for one hour. The Staggers amendment in the nature of a substitute is not subject to amendment. Finally, the rule provides one motion to recommit with or without instructions. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from South Carolina. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from New York, Mr. Solomon. Mr. Chairman, I just want to... Uh, I want to thank you and the other members of the, uh, the majority because um, uh, you are, with this rule, following the, uh, the normal rules of the House. Uh, it, it certainly is a fair rule, and uh, I really do thank you. I think, uh, I think it's been a fair debate on both sides, and uh, I, for one, even though I would prefer to see no bill, uh, I'm going to support this rule 100 percent on the floor, and I hope it passes, and I hope we have a legitimate debate on the floor. Well, I thank the gentleman from New York. As you all know, we, we all on this committee on both sides of the aisle <laughs> agonized over it because it's not the rule all of us would like to see. But uh, having said that, it must be the rule that should come out since none of us are happy with it. You've heard the motion, the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Derrick. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The rule's adopted. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that the staff shall have the right to make technical uh, changes in the rule passed today. Without objection, the rule will be handled by the chairman. The Committee on Rules will stand adjourned. Okay, thank you. You can see this program again later tonight at 12.10 a.m. Eastern Time. Coming up after this short break, we'll bring you remarks by Vice President Dan Quayle. Wednesday, Representative Adolphus Towns, chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, is the guest on our morning viewer call-in program. The congressman, a Democrat from New York, will discuss gun control legislation